Hi everyone, so today I'm gonna do a review for you on a new paint to me. I haven't tried it, so we're doing it for the first time together, which is so exciting, I know. I get so excited at trying new paint. When I went and bought it last night, I was like wanting to come home and try it, but you know, it was eight o'clock at night and my shop was pretty much closed up for the day, but I love trying new paint. Um, so I always hope that the expectation is going to be just like the excitement. And so we're going to do this together. Um, I'm going to show you the paint that I got. Uh, this is the Valspar Furniture Paint from Lowe's. And the reason that I got this was because I have a customer who wanted a color that was made by Sherwin-Williams. And I tried mixing, and I've done it before several times with several projects. Um, I tried mixing different colors to achieve that same color um, in the lines that I use, the general finishes and the fusion. Unfortunately, it was just one of those blues that I could not replicate. This is a gorgeous blue called Regatta Blue. And I just, since it's a client piece, I try to match 99.9% .9 close to the color. And everything I kept coming up with was just off. So I figured, okay, I'm gonna go and try to see if I can find a paint that I can actually have the real color mixed. And it is spot on as far as the color goes. I have no idea how it's gonna go on, how I'm gonna like it. So we're gonna find out together. We're gonna do a sample board and that's what I recommend. If you're trying something new, do not, especially if it's not your piece, do not put it right onto the piece. Try it on some practice boards. Uh, practice maybe an end table or something that you might have a piece of wood just to get the feel of it because every paint is different and there's gonna be nothing worse that if you don't like it, now you have to go back and figure out how to undo it on that particular piece. So I always recommend try doing it on a practice piece. I mentioned this in one of my other videos, but I get these at um, Lowe's and then we just cut them into sections. And these are great. These are the already primed baseboard. So it's not like it's seeping into that raw wood and having um, you know that, that effect of it being um, not on a finished piece. So this is similar to a finished piece since it's already primed and it's got some sort of a, um, uh, not a top coat, but it's got, it's got a nice finish to it like furniture does. So these are great. This is basically crown molding or a baseboard and it's just cut into sections. So I have a ton of these that I use for practicing. So we're gonna get started on this and see if we like it together. Okay, so here we go. Oh, I'm a little nervous because I can tell you this does not look like the color, but I might be fooled. Let's hope I'm fooled because that would be an enormous waste of money and time and then I'd have to be going back to the drawing board and that would not be making me very happy today. So let's hope. And now keep in mind when you're doing anything, do more than one coat. I even when a paint says one coat coverage, I still do two. It's just the way I do things. I don't like peek through in my paint. I don't like unevenness. And I am definitely not afraid to put more than one coat on. Okay, so first impression, not the same as, sorry, you guys can't see me. First impression, not the same as my normal paint. Um, after I went over one coat and I tried to kind of go back, just to even it out, I felt like it started to drag. Okay, so I'm a little nervous to actually start this on a piece, but we're gonna keep going. Okay, that's better. That's a little better. You know, I, I pride myself on my pieces not having a ton of brush strokes in them, so that is due in part to the surface that you're putting it on the paint that you're using, and then of course the brush and then your technique. So there's several things that factor into that. And um, if you, if the number one thing is the paint is not working, then that's not a good sign. So 
I'm gonna let this dry and we're gonna do a second coat as soon as it's dry and I'll come back and let you know. Okay you guys, so I'm back 20 minutes later. I gave it 20 minutes because it's super dry heat. This does not take forever to dry. And here's my first coat. So as you can see, obviously we need a second coat. So this did not claim to be a one coat paint and typically I do two to three coats. So I'm just showing you just so you know what one coat looks like. And so now we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the second coat and see how it goes on. So this is kind of where I decide whether or not the paint is for me or not. And I have used a lot of the different paints and noticed that first coat goes on great and I'm all excited and then I go to put the second coat on and eh, not so excited anymore. So that's kind of a determining factor for me is how well does the second and third coat go on. So let's Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the second coat on. I wrapped up my brush in saran wrap. That was a little trick that I did to show you guys. Um, I think I put that on my page. And so that's an awesome trick so that you don't have to wash your brush every time in between. Okay, so as I'm putting on this second coat, I can tell you I'm loving the way this glides. It literally is gliding like butter, which makes me very happy and not as apprehensive to use this product. Always give your product the full chance that it should get. Don't make a judgment call just based on the way it looks in the can or the way the first coat goes on. I'm really super impressed with that second coat. Um, just the way it went on was beautiful. Hi guys, okay, so I'm back. I have my practice piece painted. I'm happy with the way it came out. Really, really happy actually. It's got a nice sheen to it as you guys can see. Very, very minimal brush stroke, um, just like my other paints, so I'm real um, happy with that. And the color match is spot on. So I know I mentioned earlier that I was a little concerned when I popped the top on the can because it looked a lot different, but I should know better. I've been doing this long enough that, you know, paint in a can, it looks totally different than paint on a piece. So don't let that kind of scare you away. And I didn't, I just was kind of like, uh-oh, because I so badly wanted this to be the exact color um, since I wasn't using my normal paints and I went a different route. So I was just a little uh, nervous about that, but it is perfect as far as color goes. I really, really liked how um, the second coat went on. I believe that by the second coat, this should probably be done. And so, yeah, would I recommend this product? I would. Um, first time we're using it together and I would totally recommend it. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna get started on my project today and I will put an update on the video how I liked it actually going on the piece of furniture. So practicing on a board is great and that's a, obviously a good way to get started if you're unsure of a project. A product sorry always start on a practice piece because you just don't want to risk ruining that project piece like I said earlier if it's not yours especially so um, but keep in mind it will paint differently because this is you know a piece of baseboard and now I'm gonna paint a piece of furniture so stay tuned for the end result because I will post that um, once I'm done with the the project so with that being said I totally appreciate you guys watching please make sure you subscribe and look for my next video. Thanks you guys okay, so much. You guys, so we're back. We're looking at the project piece. I've got one coat on it so far and really happy with the way it's coming out. I'm gonna give you guys a close up um, in just a minute to show you, but I wanted to discuss a couple of particulars about the project, not the project, the product. <laughs> because when we were doing the uh, project piece, I didn't go into great detail about this. And one of the things that I said was I waited 30 minutes to recoat. Keep in mind, I waited 30 minutes because we had a little tiny um, you know, piece that was 12 inches by like six inches, super different than coating a whole entire piece of furniture. So I was able to recoat pretty quickly. With that being said, that's one of the things about this paint that is not so much my favorite and that is that it does say on the can to wait 24 hours before recoating that it may feel dry to the touch but don't recoat so you know what I've learned over the years is if the experts are putting it in black and white read it 
and follow it. Because, you know, as you might think it feels dry, it, it's not going to have that full time to cure in between coats and you may end up with a mess. So that is kind of a bummer because I am used to basically putting on two coats in one day and making a little more progress than with this piece having to wait in between, but it's okay. Um, because it, the paint makes up for it in so many other ways that, you know, I can work on other things in between while it's drying. But I just wanted to tell you guys, anytime you're trying a new product, and this was brand new to me, so I read everything I could about it and wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing, is to read what they say about it. You know, go online too and maybe just read reviews because you'll also get, a, you know, a good opinions from others that have used it. And that's why I'm doing this video is to give you my opinion of this particular paint. But, you know, with, you know, with the long dry time, you know, it's not a huge ordeal and it wouldn't stop me from, you know, buying this paint again. I would definitely use this paint again. I'm going to show you guys a close up in a minute um, how well it has gone on. It claims on the can no brush strokes and I don't think I've seen one yet that says that so that's pretty awesome right because we need, could use all the help we can get when it comes to eliminating brush strokes if you're you know a painter that brushes on um, so you know what I am super super happy with the product pleasantly surprised I had no idea I'd heard about it before but had never tried it and I'm so glad that I did um, so you know what I just would recommend this for sure keep in mind this is just one coat but so obviously you can see the peek through but look at that I mean I am pretty darn close and you can see no brush strokes they the claim is good so obviously you see this but again that's just dry one coat peek through coming through, but I am showing you so up close and there are no brush strokes in sight. So really loving this paint and definitely recommend Back, it. I've put the second coat on and happy to report it went on really nice and smooth. And sometimes you can get, you know, the exact opposite effect. So you can have a first coat that goes on beautifully and you're, you're just all pumped up and then you go to put your second coat on and the paint doesn't glide as nicely or it can be exactly opposite where your first coat kind of goes on and it drags and you're not real excited about it but then when you put your second coat on it goes on really nice um, with this paint um, you know the second coat went on really nice it, it glided very well over the piece and no problems the only thing that I was a little bummed about was that I really think it's gonna take a third coat which I don't know why I'm bummed most of my pieces I would say like 95% of my pieces require three coats. I do not like to see peek through. Some people, that's a look, and if they're going for that look, that's fine. But in this case, and in most of my pieces, I really like that solid coverage. So this is probably gonna require a third coat. I would say that most, the entire piece looks great, but there's a few areas. So I'll probably just go over it with a third coat and then I will top coat it and I will be done. So as soon as I go through those next steps, I'll give you guys a final review of the product, okay? Once we're back, this is the end of the video where I promised you I'd give you my final review on the Valspar Furniture Paint and um, any additional thoughts. And I wanted to tell you that after I put the third coat on, and this is the piece behind me that we've been working on, this is a client piece, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, it was a color that she had picked that was Sherwin-Williams that was having a real challenge matching it with some of my paint lines that I use, so I went into Lowe's and figured I'll give it a try. So I'm glad that I did. Um, I would give it definitely give it a thumbs up. It's a good paint. It goes on nicely. It cleans up nicely, and the only part that I didn't care for was the dry time. As I told you earlier, it's 24 hours in between coats. Um, I definitely would wait that 24 hours, even though it did feel dry to the touch. It did feel a little bit tacky, if you will, so you could kind of tell that it wasn't dry, so I completely understood what they meant. The other thing is you want to let it sit for three days afterwards. Don't move it. Don't, you know, have them come pick it up if it's a client piece. So just handle it with care for the first few days. It says that right there on the label. So that was the only downfall to this paint otherwise i would definitely recommend it and it's a good price point it's a full quart there's a ton left i think i used about that much so i have a lot of paint left for other projects so 
With that being said, it's definite buy. I would recommend it. And thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you subscribe so you can get all my videos in the future. Okay, thanks you guys.